Hey everyone, welcome back to Color Me Quaint. Um, today I will show you how to make your own Christmas card or a last minute Christmas gift that's very artsy. And I'm going to do it in real time, so if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, so what I like to do is to start with a sketchbook. Um, a I'm using this clip to hold my paper down since this is a book and it's a quite small book, A6, but since it's going to be a post postcard in my case anyway, um, I don't mind the size. Try to get a pencil that's quite light if you don't want to see your lines or you can also use a colored pencil if you want like brown outlines, that's totally up to you. I'm going to guide you through the sketching process step by step. So first you're going to start with the foreground, a little bit of a wobbly line at the bottom where we have a mixture of soil, grass and snow. Then we're going for some hills. And try just not to make it too symmetric. Two or three hills, however you like them. Draw a circle for the large bunny and draw a lower and slightly smaller circle for the small bunny without the very tip of the teardrop. So it kind of looks like a bottle or a flask starting quite thin in the neck area and then just getting fatter at the bottom. Now with these proportions, these bunnies are probably standing, um, but we're not going to see their lifted paws because we're looking at them from behind. And we're going to add a little fluffy cottontail. The small one will be leaning towards the large one a little bit. But other than that, it's the same shape. I'm adjusting just to bring it a bit closer. And have the bottoms overlap our foreground a little bit because they're slightly sinking into the snow. If you want, you can imply the hind legs a little bit, but you don't even have to. Once you're done with that, all that's left is the ears, and I think I'm going for a breed with quite smallish ears and you can be creative here you can have them long or short um, droopy or straight up however you like your bunnies Erase the lines that you don't need. I'm going to lift that one ear up a bit more. For the trees, I'm just going to 
draw a few branches slightly just to decide where I'm going to put them, but we're going to do, do the details later on. And we're going for a larger tree on the right to echo the size of the larger bunny and a little bit of a smaller tree, or at least um, there is less to be seen of the tree on the left. This really leaves a lot of empty space on the left, so I am going to add that cottage after all. Gives them something to look at and a little bit of interest. And maybe I can experiment with Christmas lights there, just to give more of a Christmas vibe, even though it's going to be very small and subtle. Now the sky still needs a few stars, and you could just do your regular five tip stars, or you can do like four point stars, a little bit like a cross made of triangles really doesn't have to be accurate. You can also just do little circles for our stars that are a bit farther away. We just want some shining objects up there. And now it's time to get out our watercolors. The foreground, I'm going to make it quite light. I'm going to have a little bit of green showing through and a bit of brown, but I do want it to be a snowy landscape, so I'm not going to go overboard with my pigments. And I am going to use white gouache later on, um, if you don't have masking fluid, you can substitute that with white gouache or white acrylic, but I am going to mask a couple of places here and there to make it easier. I'm using my masking pen for my stars and for the bunny's tails and everything that I want to remain light. But like I said, the alternative to this would be to leave out those spaces or to cover the painting up later on with white gouache or white mixed with other colors. I'm also putting in a few lights where the cottage is and the little tree. But everything else, especially the snow, I'm going to use gouache for. Now, we just have to let this dry. I decided to make my hills a little bit lower because I wanted to have more sky up there. Now you can use um, very few watercolor brushes. I like to use round brushes with a tip. Um, it's easier to fill large areas with a large one and to have a smaller one for details, but you don't really need much more than that. I'm taking my yellow green from my palette with a little bit of water and mixing it with my Viridian to make it a little bit darker. But I'm still going to keep it quite watery because I don't want it to be a very dark layer. The second color I'm going to mix is my brownish color and I'm taking some yellow ochre 
for that. Mixed with quite a bit of water again. And I'm just going to dab it on there. Wildly. Um, not too much. Keep it light. And I want the top part to be lighter than the bottom so that it looks like there is more snow at the top. I'm going in with my green and just lightly dabbing and letting those two colors um, flow into each other a bit, which will mute them, but that's fine. You just want to imply that there is a bit of grass underneath the snow. And the watercolors are just going to do their thing now, and we're going to leave them alone. I'm going to do something similar to the middle ground. Um, I'm going to use greens and browns, but I do want it to differ a little bit from the foreground. So I'm taking a little bit of my buff. Actually, it's not buff, it's um, titanium white, but it's a mixing white, so it's not very opaque. And I'm going to mix it with my brown. And add just a touch of red. I'm going for something a bit more peachy. For the green, I want it to be a little bit darker, so I'm adding more Viridian into my mix. This area I am going to wet first so that the colors will flow into each other and a wet and wet technique. And of course I am going to leave out my bunnies so the paint will be able to move in the entire area that I wetted but not touch the parts that I did not. Pay a little attention. Um, at the outlines, but the rest just cover it with a little bit of water so that it shines, but you don't want too much and you don't want a puddle. Now we're going in with our color, with our yellow ochre mix that we have from before, and our orangey, slightly sienna mix. And at this point, you can still move the paint around a little bit and guide it, but try not to do too much. I 
adding my Viridian Green now. And it looks like this paint is going to need a little bit of help spreading, um, so I'm going to do that. But just give it a little nudge and let the rest happen on its own. I'm going to wet the areas at the top with clean water because that's where I want it to be the lightest. And just try to do some re-wetting and slight mixing. Just where I feel that there is not enough water on the page. I want my middle ground to be a bit darker at the bottom. So I'm taking a mixture of my green and my brown and adding it to the bottom part to create more contrast to the foreground. You can um, dab your brush on a towel to make sure that you don't have enough water in there, even though I'm using a synthetic brush and it shouldn't hold as much as a natural hairbrush. But you can also um, remove the excess um, at the edges of your pan. It still wasn't dark enough for me, so I went back in with more green. And more brown. I'm trying to guide the paint upward without adding more pigment and the key here is really water management. So what you have to do is go in with a brush that's not too wet and just slowly guide the pigment upward without adding a puddle. And I noticed that um, I had too much going on in some spots so I removed it with the tissue. Um, if you see any puddles forming, you can do the same thing. Just remove some excess. Now this um, border or um, where the outline of the bunnies is, is a little bit more jagged than I had expected because the water is flowing into the rabbits. But since we're going in with colored pencils uh, later anyway, it's probably not going to be much of a big deal. Now if you're working with loose paper, you have an advantage because the fact that this page of my notebook um, was a bit tilted made the water flow in one direction. Um, so it's always better to have a flat piece of paper. I just wanted to remove the clip so that I could go right until the edge of the page when I did the sky. Now, like I said, I want to mix my cerulean type of greenish blue. That's a bit muted. So I'm taking the Prussian blue that's in my pan. And 
And sometimes Prussian blue on its own when watered down can be quite turquoise, depending on the paints that you have. But in my case, I will have to tweak it a little bit. Adding a little bit of my um, yellow green. And we have quite a few pigments here, so it's going slightly murky. But I don't mind that much for the background if it's a little bit dull and muted. I'm going to test this on a scrap piece of watercolor paper. And I would advise you to do the same because that's the only way of really knowing what it will actually look like in the end. I don't dislike this shade at, at all. Here I'm trying to soften the outlines of the bunnies. And I have to be careful because um, I don't want to wet the page too much and have the pigments flow into the bunny shape. So I have to make sure that my underlying layer is quite dry. And that's generally something to um, pay attention to when you're glazing watercolors to make sure that the uh, first layer is completely bone dry before you add the second or you will have um, colors mixing and making the whole thing um, a bit muddy. Adding my sky color and one quite wet wash. And the fun thing about masking fluid is that you really don't have to pay attention to the stars in this case, you can just paint over them and not worry about the, those parts. My page is very tilted, so I decided to put my clip back in to make sure it stays as flat as possible. Um, also, my paper is bulging a little bit because it's not stretched. If you can stretch your paper and um, tape it to your surface, with masking tape, then by all main means do that. It might still buckle a tiny little bit, but it will flatten out once it dries. I realized that I wanted more gradient in my sky, so I'm going to add more of that greenish blue to the lower part, and I'm going to remove some of what I have right at the top of the page by using a tissue and soaking up the excess water and pigment. I'm adding even more clear water at the top to emphasize that. But like I said, just make sure it's not too much, otherwise you'll have a puddle and um, strange outlines that you don't want. I am going to try and do some experimenting here uh, by adding some other, some more pigment in there just to give the sky um, a little bit of variety and interest. But this, I will warn you, did not turn out the way I wanted it to. So um, use at your own risk or just skip this step entirely. The problem was that I, my red 
Um, my permanent red is quite a neutral shade of red, but it's not the cool that I want for um, a peach tone. So I ended up using a lot of water to turn the red into pink. And all that water just spread out and created a very light area with an outline. So the better route would have been to get the right type of red or pink or peach. Um, and use that without loading my brush with so much water or without mixing too much water on my palette. I am now going in with some yellow. I just wanted the sky to be a little bit more colorful, I guess. But that's the thing with watercolors. You just, you try things out and sometimes they end up not looking um, the way you expected them because it's a medium that's kind of hard to control and you can already see um, the blossoming edge of that little pink circle and that's just because I used too much water. I'm trying to kind of fix that with my brush but not really succeeding here. I'm going to go for a different solution for this and add another glaze on top which will darken the sky which is fine in my case because I want it to be a darker sky anyway I don't necessarily want it to be a daytime sky but a little bit darker not really nighttime either but this can definitely take another wash of blue Trying to add more red in here to bring back the color, but it's still so diluted that it's not really making a lot of a difference. At some point I just decided to let that dry and come to it later, because it's really hard to manipulate a layer if it has a little bit of wetness in there. It's easier to just let it dry and then come back to it. To test if your page is dry, you can put the back of your hand on the paper and it should have room temperature. If it's still cool to the touch, then it's not dry enough to be covered with another glaze. Again, I'm trying to fix my outlines now that the background is dry, just to blur those harsh lines a little bit. Now we're starting with our bunnies and I'm using my um, light red. It's a little bit of a red ochre color and I'm muting it with green because green is the complementary color to red and it's going to go in a more grayish direction instead of a reddish direction by adding green. That's a darker color. I also want to mix a lighter color and I'm using my the same brown and some of my um, titanium white, my mixing white and a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm testing it on my scrap paper until I'm happy with the shade. Now the middle parts or the center parts will be a bit lighter 
because we're just imagining the light coming from the back in this case um, or we're just trying to add a three-dimensionality to the bunnies so the parts that are receding are going to be a little bit darker In watercolor, if you want things to blend, you should work quite fast. If you're doing wet and wet because you don't want this light color to dry before we add the darker one to the contours, we want them to mix a little bit. I add a little bit of water at the center because I don't want too much pigment there. And now we're going slightly darker. Using the dark brown that we just mixed, we are going around the border of the bunny and just pulling that paint down so we don't have a puddle and it's going to naturally mix with the first brown that we laid down. I'm adding a bit more darkness in the neck area and around the little tail to make it pop a bit more. I wanted even more darkness for the tips of the ears um, because I wanted that look like some Siamese cats. I think there's a breed of bunnies that also has those darker points at the snout or nose and at the tips of the ears and a little bit down the back. Watercolor does dry about 30% lighter that, than when it is wet, but the great thing about it is that you can always layer and add more colors, you just have to be a little bit patient and allow for drying times. Now that the background is dry, we can start adding in our pine trees. 
and I'm taking my Viridian Green again. A cool dark green. I'm just doing a very classic um, Christmas tree shape with branches sticking out and then little, little needles coming from the branches. You could use a fan brush if you want a different texture. There are different ways of painting trees, so do this any way you want, but I think that this one is going to be the easiest way. I realized that I wanted to darken this a little bit with some brown to make it a little less bright. Now just simply adding in the needles for that bushy look. Adding a bit more at the very edge of the page to make it a little bit more dense. And if your brush doesn't have a nice tip, you can just go for a smaller brush. I'm also adding a tree to the background, right next to our cottage. And then I'm painting the little, little cottage using mainly my yellow ochre with my light red or red ochre. 
also adding a few touches of wood in my trees to make it a little bit more realistic. They're just shining through those pines. You can probably not tell that this is a cottage at this point because I used quite a bit of masking fluid there. So we might have to bring that shape out better when we use our um, colored pencils in the end. Now that our background is, our um, sky is dry, um, we are going to go in with more blue to fix my mistakes and also just to make the entire sky a little bit more deep and intense. I am wetting the area first to help the color spread out. And I'm not putting any pressure on there, I'm just softly gliding over the surface because I don't want to disturb the first layer. I'm remixing my greenish blue by using Prussian blue and Viridian as I did before. Testing it on my paper and as you can see it's a bit darker than what we had before but since we have water on our page that's going to lighten it a little bit. And I'm adding it to the bottoms and letting it spread out more to the top and become lighter. I already have a little bit less pigment on my brush as I go. But I'm taking the excess pigment off in water. Then tapping my brush on the side of my water cup to take off even more fluid and then go in to just soften and blend the top portion of my sky. Adding a bit more paint to my very light cottage. And this is a matter of taste. I'm adding a grayish roof. You could keep the entire thing lighter because it's quite far in the distance. And with all that snow, you're probably not going to see too much of the cottage. But I just wanted it to be a little bit more intense.
I'm going in with a slightly damp brush again. I'm doing some blending within the bunny shapes where some lines have formed that I don't want. And I'm going to repeat myself here, but the key is not to have too much water on your brush. The masking fluid is dry, so we are going to take it off and exposing the white underneath. We are done with our watercolors at this point and for the rest of the video we will be using our colored pencils and later on some white gouache. And our colored pencils are just going to give us a little bit more control to bring out some things more. I'm using an orange and a yellow for the stars. And I absolutely love this banana yellow. It looks much more bluish on camera, but it's a bit more warm in real life. I'm going to use this for the centers of the stars and then blend in the orange more towards the edges. I also want to experiment with this peach color, which is called apricot orange, and I also got out my pink just to see if I can add some accents with it. So go on and make your stars yellow. I forgot to rub off some masking fluid there. Adding in our orange to warm everything up. You could choose to take a blue and go around the stars in some areas to create more contrast, but I didn't do that in this case. It was okay for me to have like very subtle and harmonious stars. Now I'm doing more blending with my yellow to mix with the orange a little bit better and intensify everything using a bit more pressure. And I might even use another yellow that's a bit more intense. The irregularities in the sky that I created are not going to be as obvious when we add our snowflakes by the end, so I'm not too worried about them right now. You can always use white to blend, or a blending stick depending on the medium that you're using. And here I'm experimenting again by going in with apricot, 
and just adding some extra accents in there to make it a little bit more fun. Just adding little crosses at stars in the background, but you don't have to do that. Also going in with my pink. Because the blue sky underneath is dulling this color down quite a bit. And I'm also filling those holes with a few touches of color here and there, but you really don't have to do that. It's just a matter of preference how you want your sky to look. You may choose to use a greenish blue to go over those areas that are a bit lighter. In my case, I'm not going to overdo it because I just simply could not find the right colored pencil for my color. But you may be more lucky and this is just a matter of fixing my mistake again and you may not even need the step. Now I'm going to add those string lights to our cottage and our little tree in the background. You can't really see the details, but it just gives it a little bit of a Christmas atmosphere. Emphasizing the cottage shapes again because they were very covered up by our masking fluid before. Adding a little bit of shadow under the bunnies to just set them in the scene. Just using some grays. to add this beige color um, almond brown actually to our tails so that they're not stark white And most importantly, I want to bring out those bunnies a little bit more and give them more emphasis. So I'm going to add some outlines with brown. I like using brown outlines because they have that vintage feel and it's also not too strong.
Leave the top of the hat a bit lighter. Because the little bit of starlight is probably shining on there. And just add a little bit of shading wherever you feel you need it. Especially the sides. Going lighter the more you go towards the center. I'm adding a bit more in the neck to um, emphasize that I guess indentation. <laughs> and I'm adding a darker umber just for those Siamese breed tips of the ears. And wherever I want to add more darker fur. decided to go in with even more colors for the string lights to make it a bit more fun. And now we are done with our colored pencils and we can start with the last finishing touches which is adding the snow. And for the snow, as I mentioned before, I am going to use my jelly gouache that I have. If you don't have that, um, acrylic will do. Um, if you don't have that either, then I guess you could go with um, a chalk pastel, but that's not going to last very long. Maybe you have an oil pastel. Just think about any opaque white that you may have. I'm not going to do the snowflakes one by one, but I'm going to use a splattering technique. Take some of your white gouache. I am going to mix it with a little bit of water, but I still want it to be quite opaque because I want the snow to really stand out. And just dab your white in the foreground area. Don't be too precise. Don't cover everything up. You want to have more white at the top than at the bottom. And just let a little bit of that grass show through. Thank you. 
I'm adding a little bit of yellow to my white. To add a bit of shading and interest down here and make the white a little bit less uniform. But in general, I'm keeping the snow quite bright white because I just wanted to contrast strongly with the colors I already laid down. For the hilltops, I'm using white really straight out of my pan or out of your tube, whatever you have. And not worrying too much about having a blurred line because that's going to actually accentuate the snowy atmosphere. And the top of the mountain always has more snow than the lower parts, so we're going from very light to, or a lot of white to less white, and then adding a few areas where the snow accumulates because it's not always spread evenly everywhere. Maybe even add some of it to the cottage, even though that's probably not going to be very visible. And what's probably going to make the most difference is the snow landing on our pine trees in the foreground. Just added mostly to the tops of the branches, um, taking care not to cover everything up so that we can still see some of it green. It's just mainly lying on top and mixing a little bit with the rest of the tree. The last thing we're going to do is add some snow sprinkles and snowflakes. And the only tricky part to this is figure out the correct consistency for your paint to get the right size of snowflakes in the end. And this does take a little bit of experimentation, so make sure you have a harder brush. I'm using a bristle brush that I usually use for acrylic. It's beaten up but the bristles are quite hard, which gives me that um, toothbrush-like effect that I can really um, sprinkle paint on. This would not work with a soft brush because it's just too bouncy. I'm going to use this palette to test this technique. And the paint is going everywhere but not on the palette. And now you just adjust the amount of water and paint until you're happy with the result. The farther away you move from your page, the smaller your snowflakes are going to be and the closer you are the larger they will be but they will also form a little bit of cluster so figure out what you like the best i 
Here we go. Actually, I'm going to cover up this side because I still intend to paint on it. And start small. You can always increase the amount of paint later. I realized I had to go a little bit closer for the snowflakes to really show, and this made a mess. But if you're quick with the cleanup, it shouldn't be a problem because it's all water soluble. If you have a toothbrush, then by all means uh, use that. It works just the same. You don't need any fancy brush for this. I feel that these snowflakes are what really gives this little painting a very wintry atmosphere. And doing highlights is always the most fun. It's, it makes such a difference at the end that I really enjoy this part. Okay, we are done with our painting. I will have to do a little bit of cleaning up here, but I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope um, to be able to make more of these um, real-time tutorials for you to follow along with. I wish you a very merry and happy Christmas. Um, stay safe and have a lovely time with your loved ones. See you next time.